What's going on guys, Victor here. I am out once again. My good buddy Johnny Stabile right here. We got Chef James. Johnny and I actually did that clown knife video where we made fish cakes in the same body of water we're at Lake Ida. Johnny's a guide out here targeting specifically peacock bass. Yep, peacocks, clown knife fish, sunshine bass, largemouth bass. Today we are after, I called Johnny last night and I'm like, hey man, I haven't done like a good gar video. And he goes, all right, I got the spot. James and I are gonna whip it up in the kitchen and you guys can find all of Johnny's stuff linked below, sflfishingcharters.com. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna load up on bait. Yeah, we're gonna, we're in the middle of the lake right now. We're gonna look for them on the sonar, see if we can't find some, and then we're gonna get to fishing. Uh, we're looking for the threadfin shads. Uh, we're gonna be throwing a 10 foot barracuda cast net today, and they should be pretty thick. Oh yeah, I gotta throw right now. Ready? I got like five. So we're just kind of like in this open body of water right now. We got the drone up, Johnny's loading up the net. And what exactly are you looking for? for um, the so bait? I'm, I'm marking them on the sonar right now. Um, if you look at the screen, you'll see these big pods here. And what we're looking for is we're looking for one that goes from the top as far to the bottom as possible and then long on the screen. So as we go over it, you know it's gonna be a really big school of bait. There's a few in there. We got a handful. They're all super tiny, but perfect gar baits. Perfect gar baits. All right, you guys, let the gar hunt begin. We actually, Johnny's buddy saved the day and gave us some bait and actually gave us a gar that he caught like right next to us. Check this thing out. We already got one in the cooler, but we got to get some on video for you guys. So just like the last video, we're kind of just going down this little skinny canal. You could catch pretty much anything in these canals, right? Oh, absolutely. Anything from peacocks to clowns to largemouth bass to all the cichlids. And today, especially gar. We are throat hooking our threadfin shads. This keeps them alive the longest. Just putting a little number two hook right in there in their throat like that. This one's really frisky. And we're gonna cast it out. We're gonna see if we can get some peacocks first. And then if the baits die, it's no big deal because the gar love to eat the dead baits right on the surface. And what you guys will see with this fishery is it's all sight fishing, which is a lot of fun. I don't think there's anything more fun than watching a fish eat on top. And we're just pitching any type of structure, pipes, vegetation, boats, docks, anything basically that's not open water. Peacock number one. Woo. That's it. That's probably one of your most requested fish, isn't it? Yeah. It looked big. So that, that, this is a male fish. You can tell by the hump on its head. Um, it's a, just like a soft kind of little membrane feeling uh, knot that they have. This is the scientific name for this is uh, it's a, called a cock. It's spelled K-O-K. -okay. These are on all of like your flower horn cichlids. Granted, peacocks are cichlids. So what this is, they're just storing protein up in there for mating season is in a short, what it is. Good job, brother. Oh, he got it. Matt. Got it. We're gonna let him eat it. You see how he's just, you see, if you watch them, we're gonna free spool a little bit too. There's two, there's another one sitting with him, isn't there? There's a peacock. It's actually a peacock. All right, so he's swimming. He's got this thing in his mouth. You could see him clear as day. He's holding his bait in his mouth. He's gonna get to the point where he's tired of holding it and he's gonna start chewing on it. And once that hook gets in a good spot, we're gonna set the hook, reel him in, get him in the boat. All right, you wanna get that net ready, James? Yeah. Or if, if you're, uh, yeah, he's got it. All right, we're on. Yeah. Nice. We're on, got a gar on. James, coming up right to you, bud. Yeah, Florida gar. Nice. Nice, right, boys. He's not very big, but he's full of meat. We're gonna, you know, this is gonna be great to eat. These guys are very powerful, very slimy. You wanna hold them with two hands. And if you tap right on the top of their mouth, just like this, it'll get their mouth to open. You can see those big teeth right in there. How cool is that? They have a really pretty pattern too. Yeah, they do. They've got really good colors actually. You can really um, 
turn them completely sideways. You can really like appreciate it when they're out of the water. When they're in the water, you can't really tell how cool they are, you know? Mm -hmm. Dude, there's like five right there. Look yeah, at them all. they're just chilling, dude. There's the bigger ones. All right, James, you can go for it. Oh! See, that's what it... That's the what? That's the what? Come on, YouTuber. That's why you let him eat it longer. I got a little jumpy there. Yeah, you got it pretty good. I just saw it disappear, so I assumed he got it. But... Yeah. There's a couple of them right there. They really got, like... I'm oh, eight. man, I'm dude. They like that shallow so stuff. Get, yeah, they do. I'm gonna get that one next. Let's see the double, boys. Oh! oh. oh come on. He, oh, he, he he's after it. it. He's after he it. Put it. it right in front of his face. Switch it again. God. He got it. Yeah, he got, yeah, it. He let, got let it. Let him sit I'm with it. I'm yep. Yeah. Oh, oh! Dude, he literally jumped out of the net. You can't even say he did it. Jeez. <laughs> All right, so this is uh, number three. Well, number two that we caught. Oh, 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 right there. How cool is that? Open up, buddy. Dude, look at those teeth. Hey, hey, hey. That is the gnarly little mouth. You know, they, they don't have a big one, and they they spend a long time with the bait right in between those teeth, and they'll just chomp on it. It might seem silly, but you got to let these things eat forever because we're sight fishing them, and they have a really small mouth opening, but they have these crazy little teeth and they'll swim and they'll just chomp, 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 trying to get into little pieces and to really inhale that bait. So we'll let them eat, shoot, sometimes even two minutes. And I just have it in free school right here until I really know he's got it down the hatch. Because I don't think the feeling of the line really bothers them. It's, you don't want to set on when they don't have the hook completely down the hatch. And another thing is they have extremely hard mouths, so you got to really kind of give it to them and fish really fine wire, sharp mustad hooks. I'm gonna stick them. Don't fall in. All right, here we go. Oh, he's on. That he is on. a fish in the boat. These are the hardest little fish you'll ever hold in your life. They're armor plated. They, they do like a gator roll. They don't just flop, they, they're they extremely slimy and they're hard, like you can't squish them down. But get a load of that mouth. Just real strong fish. Like you could totally see how they're related to an alligator. And not to be confused with, so in Florida we do have alligator gar, but the majority of what you'll see is Florida gar. These are the smaller species, they don't get that big. This is probably the average size you see. Alligator gars you guys might have seen on TV and stuff, they have really big wide snouts and they get I think in excess of 100 pounds. So we're loading up. We're doing good. Ready, All right, we ready? ready? We're gonna do the double hook set. Are you ready for this? Yeah. One, two. On. On. Got a double. Double gar action. Do you want me to hold the camera? Haha, <laughs> <laughs> two gar for the price of one. All right, we got an absolute unit gar on right now. I'm trying to be real easy with them. We're fishing real light leader. I don't want to break them off. Woo! Barely fits in the net. Look at that chunker. That's a big one there. They look funny. They're really disproportionate. Like their head to their body size, they're just girthy. So that is a big one. That's probably like a solid four pounder. Excited to see the the difference in the meat between these big guys but like i was saying they're they're really disproportionate fish so we got enough gar to do our catch and cook tonight i think we got eight in the cooler so we're gonna make a little run head to the clown knife fish grounds Johnny is actually going to show you guys how to do step one of the guard cleaning process. We ended up taking eight home in the angle. And uh, once again, guys, I'll have all of his charter stuff linked below. Today, I told him, I was like, let's target gar. We saw a few clown knife fish rolling. So if you guys still want to do the clown knife thing and the peacock bass thing, I'll have the other video linked below because this guy brushes it. First step, get your sharpest garden shears. <laughs> and you're going to want to enter right through this first pectoral fin here. You want to wedge it in nice and deep and start to get some cuts in. And these are like armor plated fish. These are, uh, it's almost like a porcelain tile how hard it is. And you're gonna wanna use two hands and slice 
It's no joke. Like when he says it's hard, it is literally the most difficult fish I've ever had to clean. Listen to this. Ready? Okay, that's the head. That's the armor scales. This whole thing, you could have the world's sharpest knife. It's not going through this skin. You need something with compression and shears, some type of scissor or garden tool just to open up the part that Johnny's doing, which you guys are gonna see here. Now we're cutting the head off because Vic's gonna make me a nice head mount out of this fish. Oh yeah. You hear that crunching? That's because we're literally breaking through armor. Here we go, that'll be a good one. Stop right at this back dorsal fin here and we're gonna start cutting down the side of the fish and this will just make it easier for step two, so. What you're gonna wanna do is this skin, you can't just tear it off of the meat. It's like really glued on there. You want a nice flexible knife. This is an eight inch Dexter and you guys can actually save 20% off. Use my code Landshark, I'll have it linked below. Highly recommend whatever knife you're gonna use to use a flexible one because it really contours to the skin. So start right here by the head, put some pressure on it and kinda just feel um, your knife going in between the, the flesh of the fish and the skin and you're going to just repeat this and that's why that you really need that flexible part because it kind of fights you it really does not want to separate from it and you can't lay this fish flat like you nor normally could and that's why i say it could be a little intimidating i don't know how to describe it it's, it's like got a cigar shape you know you kind of roll in the skin off of the fillet so that's what you end up with one on one side if you guys can kind of picture that so the skin is like that you got to fold it down but you need that curve of that knife to uh, separate. So now what you do is from the top down, I find the spine and I just run my knife along the edge of the spine. And I think another reason people don't really keep these fish is you don't get a lot of yield off of them. For the amount of work that you do, there's a ton of waste. I feel like this fish stores most of its energy and muscle in its skin. Nothing's really out there eating them except maybe a gator. That one looks like a, almost like a worm, or a, yeah, worm head. Yeah, it could be. Okay. See, that's what I mean is, I mean, such a big fish, you'd expect a bigger fillet, but this right here, that's all bone, 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 bone. It's like they have one massive rib cage rather than a, you know, rib cage like a snapper grouper has towards the top of the head. They have a, a rib cage that runs all along the fish. If you kind of picture them, a fish's fillets are on the side. A gar's fillets are kind of like in this upper quadrant and all of its guts and uh, ribs are on the bottom. So uh, we got a full crew for dinner tonight to do a good taste test of the gar for you guys. So we'll catch you in the kitchen. Chef Game's in the house. He's taking over once again. <laughs> I'll cook one day again. I don't think he needs to anymore. If you guys keep, keep, t keep telling Victor to bring me back and uh, he won't have to cook anymore, you know? Well, the comments speak for themselves. You're welcome here. Well, thank you guys and thank you for watching. It's, it's, been, it's an awesome experience like being here with Victor and Brooke. They're amazing people, they really are. So tonight we're gonna do something like super, super easy, which most of the stuff I do is easy and you guys can do at home. But as you can see right here, I got one of the first components. Beautiful, nice, fresh vegetables. We got hearts of palm, otherwise known as swamp cabbage. Swamp cabbage. Just just nice, like super clean, like kind of what you think of when you think of Florida. Oranges, citrus, you know, obviously we're, we're cooking the gar. So, very Florida-esque. Florida-esque. And then for the marinade for this salad, we're gonna go like super, super Florida. Florida oranges, a little bit of some limes, some fresh orange juice, which you're also gonna use for a sauce called a gastrique. So this is called a supreme when you do this. A supreme? Yeah, supreme, supreme, whatever. So when you walk to this house and you see someone do that to an orange, you just know you're gonna have a good dinner, don't you? Oh yeah. And really all you're doing is just getting all the white goodness off. And then if you look at the orange, you can kind of see the sections. They're already kind of made for you. And this is where you kind of have to be careful, but just watch your hand when you do it. And they kind of come out in little segments like that. And you'll see, you'll see the parts where you cut into. Wow. Just super fresh and nice. All right, so this is just the, uh, the marinade for the orzo salad. We're gonna boil the orzo, just like you do pasta. It's just, it is pasta essentially. And we're gonna cool it down. But to start, this is the marinade. I, 
I squeezed the rest of those, uh, the leftover of the oranges that were that we supreme. And then all you're gonna do, and there's four limes in there as well. Probably just like, you can eyeball this. It's probably like a half a cup of rice wine vinegar. It's gonna be like a broken vinaigrette. So a broken vinaigrette really, it, it doesn't get emulsified, so it doesn't really matter because it's a marinade. Well, no, actually the emulsification process from like mustard, usually mustard okay. is like your emulsification in a vinaigrette. And we're just eyeballing it with the uh, with the sesame oil. Very small amount, a little bit of olive oil. Somebody used my mini whisk for once. I know, I saw this, so cute. <laughs> I'm gonna get made up, I'm gonna get made fun of for this. This is like, we're in kitchen mitts. <laughs> <laughs> you explain that? The kitchen mitt thing? Yeah. I just, I would get torn up in my kitchen if I ever walked in there with kitchen mitts. My chef would make me grab pans the rest of the night with my hand. So this is the, this is gonna be like the ginger and orange gastrique and don't be alarmed by the name gastrique because it's really just a fancy word for, it's almost like a, just think sweet and sour and that's why we're going kind of Asian, we're adding some ginger to it. But no oil in the pan. You can add the ginger right, right into the pan. Still, we'll get like that nice fragrant ginger flavor and smell. Like a whole thing of orange juice, probably like, I'd say this is like three cups. And you just put it in there while the pan's ripping hot. All you're doing is just letting this reduce down. I would say the level that it's at right now is like half the pot. I would let it go down like another half. And you're gonna add about a cup of sugar, which I'm also gonna eyeball. We're gonna do a cup of sugar. And we're gonna do like, two or three teaspoons of palm sugar as well. It adds a little, nice little flavor to it. All right guys, so we got the gar going down right now. We're gonna dust this in the little coriander and ginger spice. I got the pans kind of ripping behind me right now. They're gonna, this is a thinner fish. So we're gonna just finish it in the pan versus like me sticking in the oven on one side and getting like a nice sear on it. The smaller fish, can't see as much now that they're seasoned, but the smaller fish were noticeably more orange and pink than the big fish. The big gar was white as can be, which most people associate white uh, fish with being the least fishy and the most pleasant. But um, I thought it was kind of interesting that the bigger ones you'd think, most people avoid really big fish, but they were super white. So you got that smoke rolling out of there like really well. That's what you want. You don't want it hot enough where it's gonna burn the dry spice, because that will happen very quickly. I wouldn't even like call it like completely cold. I would just say like room temperature. With with vegetables like this, you really wouldn't want to add something hot to it. Cause I mean, I don't know if you ever had a hot cucumber before, it's not very good. So nice room temperature orzo. I already threw the, the vinegar, the broken vinaigrette that you guys saw me make earlier. Whoa, look at those babies. So that's not the sear side down. Wow. All those colors come out. Look at that pop, man. And it's your favorite, your favorite part, guys. You do a little plating part. This is the gastric. Just like it's just like a little puddle on the plate. It's just a really nice, fresh little marinade for this. Do the orzo down. Popping now. It's popping. <laughs> <laughs> it's popping now, isn't it? Oh yeah. You never have to worry with this guy behind the counter that your meal's gonna turn out good, do you? You yep. just you just know it's gonna be good. Big Springs Myco Greens right there. Voila. <laughs> James is the man. He can make gar. <laughs> Look like a million bucks and taste like a million bucks. Best hype man ever. Dude, you gotta have the, you gotta have the, that thing ready. You can't make me do it again. Do it again. <laughs> 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 that gar was a little tough, but it didn't make it, you know, not taste good. It still tasted good. It just took a little bit of effort to get your fork through it. And here I am sitting next to a chef who I'm just thinking in my mind, how much would he have rather had mutton snapper to serve to this big group of people because he knows he can make mutton snapper like fall off the fork and just melt in your mouth. But instead, 
What's he got to work with? Garb that you have to take scissors and cut through it like it's armor plating. So I'm thinking, if you're a chef and you take on Garb, you gotta have some pretty big balls, man. That's, that, that's a statement right there, because I know he'd rather be serving Mutton Snapper, but he made Garb look good and taste good. Good job, James. Thank you. <laughs> can't, can't wait for you to cook me some Mutton Snapper. <laughs> I can't wait. I think everyone had three pieces of fish. Um, and you can see on the tray that they all had different colors. And one was a little bit tough. One was like almost tender, like your fork could go right through. Mm -hmm. My third one, I'll be honest, I don't even know if I can eat it because it was so, so chewy. Actual fish is delicious. James killed it again, like my dad said, like we have thrown some weird things at him and he has just killed it. We often catch gar on our guided excursions in Lake Ida. And um, I've had a couple of groups tell me from all over the US that gar are really good to eat and how they have a back strap that's really good. and. I was kind of, you know, I was expecting something really good and it lived up to my expectations. You guys are more than welcome to come out and fish with me for gar any day of the week along with the peacocks and everything else. As a chef, I, I think everything worked well together. I think that I'll, I'll stand behind my dish, definitely. Next time I would definitely do something different with the gar, like I was just mentioning to Victor, I would probably take it and put it in like a meat grinder, like some kind of sausage or something, something kind of out of the box and different. Tough fish. It's. I've never had a fish that I've never been really able to cut through with a fork. Flavor-wise, it's is, is right on. I think it's delicious fish, and I wouldn't turn my nose to it at all, ever. Thank you, James, for cooking once again. You killed it, dude. I mean, you guys can see that everyone's plates are empty, and we got 12 people here tonight, and everybody loved it. Some people had tougher pieces than others, and I think that's just what fish you got or what section of it, but like I say, there's no such thing as trash fish, just trash cooks, and if you can make everything else on your plate look and taste good, you can make the fish taste good, and it honestly was delicious. Johnny, thank you once again for taking us out. We had a killer time. I will have all of Johnny's stuff linked below. Thank you guys so much for watching and for letting us do what we do, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.